Hello? 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 Is that, is that an evil spirit? Go away, no. evil spirit! No, no, Craig, not an evil spirit. I got your... I found your map. Oh, it is Zentacus! Hello! Hello, my friend! Sit down! How are you? I am fine. Let me sit down. Good, you found my invitation, did you? Good, come sit down, yeah. sit down. Right. Well, I'm here because a long time ago we were going through the Black Forest and they all wanted to hear the Black Forest story and I would not tell the story because the sun was high and when the sun is high there is horrible curse that comes on man if you tell the story and now that it is dark and there is campfire I say that we must tell around campfire back then and now the time has come to tell the story. So, Zendikus, this is the story I was supposed to tell you. I'm Welcome. Ready. You're ready. Welcome. I'm ready. I've been waiting for the story for the longest time, Craig. Sadly, my colleagues have all died and are probably now zombies. Okay. Then this story was meant for you. Welcome. Welcome. To Gypsy Cred's campfire stories, and this is the story of the Black Forest Horseman. Back in the time of kings and swords, there lived a lord called Sir Bartek Borowski, and he lived in a beautiful castle with a happy wife and happy son. But this was not to last, as a horrible plague swept through the land, the villages began to die and starve in their homes. One morning, the Lord was called down to Gorka. The villagers had caught the witch who lived in the Black Forest. They thought that she was to blame for the people's suffering, and she should be burnt at the stake. But Sir Bartek knew the witch was good of heart and harmless, and convinced the villagers to let her go. The witch thanked Lord Bartek and vanished into the woods. Two weeks later, the plague had spread to the Lord's castle. Its insidious pestilence tore the life from the guards, to the servants, and to even the Lord's wife and child. Lord Bartek shut himself away in his grief and despair. He prayed to God to deliver his family back from the void. But something else but God was also listening. One dark night, the moon turned red. Its crimson light shone on the dark hooded horseman as he rode up into the castle and requested an audience with the Lord. He entered the great hall and introduced himself as Lucifer, the dark one himself. The servant said he looked just like normal man, but his eyes were as black as hell itself and could swallow the soul. He said to the Lord, I can return your family, but not without a price. The Lord offered gold. Devil said no. The Lord offered his best horse and armor. Devil said no. Instead, the dark one said, I like this castle. Strong walls, grand halls. The castle for family. Nothing more, nothing less. The Lord agreed, as he would offer anything to get his loved ones back. He signed the deeds, and the bargain was struck. The devil said, come morning, your son and wife will awake. I will return on the seventh night to claim what is mine. Before he left, he turned to the Lord and said, Though I warn you, for if a dishonored deal, I tear the souls from the bodies and cast them into the worst pits of hell. He rode out down the hill and disappeared into the night. Come dawn, the sun rose, and as it shone on the Lord's family, the color came back into their skin, and they awoke as if something from a dream. 
the Lord was filled with so much joy of his family's return, he held big celebration. He brought dancers, jesters, sword fighters, and there was much feasting and drinking. As the days went by, he started thinking about the deal. Some say he thought it was too great a price, or that, by God, it was his divine right that the castle must be his. Or he was simply a corrupt and selfish man. But whatever he thought, he decided to keep the castle and double the guards on the gate. Thus, on the seventh night, the moon rose and turned red, and from the shadows rode forth the horsemen to the gate. But the gates weren't left open to welcome its new keeper. The horseman was met by many spears. The Lord had betrayed him. The devil let out a hateful scream that cut through the castle. It traveled in a wind, sounding like a million souls crying from the fires of hell itself. When it swept into the great hall, the Lord's wife and son began to scream, and to everyone's horror, their skin turned black and started to fall away. Within a few moments, the Lord was left with nothing but holding rotting meat and bones of his family. The devil was furious. He rode across the land, raising the dead the plague had taken and the skeletons of ancestors of old armies and marched to the storm the castle. He commanded his army of undead up the hill. They tore the guards to pieces as fast as they tore at the gate. No matter guard or servant, they were opened up and turned inside out. The devil cast an unstoppable fire that consumed the castle. The Lord ran to his chamber, and with the last of his subjects being fed or falling off the battlements in flames, he escaped through a secret tunnel leading outside the castle. The flames rose into the clouds behind the Lord who ran through the night. He had lost everything. And with the devil searching for him, he ran into the black forest. For there was only one person left who could give him any kind of salvation. The witch! He threw himself before her and begged her to deliver him from the grasp of the devil. And as the Lord had spared her soul, so she spared his. She took him to the stone circle on the hill by Gorkar and summoned the powers of the old to take his spirit into the black forest and hide it from the devil forever. So, to this night, Lord Bartek has not been found for the devil, but the castle now lies in ruins, and it has a horrible name, the Devil's Castle, for it is the devil who did, really did claim the castle in the end, and every night they say, hooves can be heard coming down from the castle, and a shadowy horse figure goes into the woods to try and find Bartek to drag him in to the pits of hell to make sure he pays his price but if you say it in the light the horseman can hear you and he can see you from the woods and to be seen from by the devil is a curse in itself that is why it must be seen in the dark the story must be told, so that the devil or any demon cannot see you. And that is the story of the Black Horseman. Oh man. Now that I know the story, Cred, I'm be thinking about this every day, every time I walk through this forest. Good. Now you taking heed. I know that you probably wanted not to hear the story. 
but it's as they say curiosity kills the cat in life there are some stories you want to hear and storm stories you wish you hadn't heard and that is the price but remember never tell the story when the sun is high for you will be cursed <laughs>